Hey everybody, welcome back to another Subboarder video. This time we're going to be doing a review slash comparison and a bit more of an informational video about the Bravo electric pumps because we've been using them for a few years now and they've got some new upgrades on these new pumps. So these are the new pumps for 2019. So we're going to go over all the upgrades. We're going to talk about what we've learned over the years and how to get the most out of these pumps for when you're using them to inflate your ice ups. Now without a doubt, Bravo, who are made by Scoprica in Italy, are a main player in the pump world. In fact, maybe the biggest ice up pump manufacturer to date. Make very good stirrup pumps, two-way pumps, hand pumps, but also their electric pumps have been winning test after test for the last few years. And without a doubt, they are the game player. They are the one that you want to bench all pumps on. So if you're looking at an electric pump, these are the ones you've got to be looking at to be taken seriously and get your board pumped up as quick as possible. Now Bravo have been working really hard on these pumps over the last few years and they have increased their battery life, they have increased the speed that they can inflate and actually they brought the noise level down of these pumps too. So just to clarify the names and the versions of these pumps because there are quite a few updates that happened in the last year to these two pumps. So this is the GE20 and it's the version 2. So it's the GE20.2 and this is the GE21.1. So if you're looking at the pumps, the GE20.2 and the GE21.1 is the most up-to-date pumps at the moment. So a little bit of information about the pumps. One is a cheaper base pump and one is a more expensive one. The GE20.2 has got everything. It retails around the 250 euros. The GE21 is around 50 euros cheaper. So let's talk about the specifications of the pumps and the differences of these two pumps. Both the pumps pump up to 21.7, 22 psi pretty much, so you can easily get enough air into your ice up. Most ice ups aren't really getting any more than 20, really sitting around 15 to 18 psi, which is absolutely fine. When we tested these pumps to pump up a board, so we used a 150 litre board, which is like this sort of surfs up here, and we pumped it up to 18 psi. Both the pumps pumped it up pretty quickly, well under five minutes. GE20 had an average time of 4 minutes and 38 and the GE21 had an average time of 4 minutes 55. So it's a bit, about 10 seconds faster but really nothing much in it. And with both these pumps we could pump up 4 boards on one battery charge. The biggest thing you do notice is the noise level is quite a bit different between this one and the GE20. If I turn the two pumps on now in the studio, you'll notice that you can hear the GE21 over the GE20. Look at this, on. <laughs> So this pump is quite a bit noisier, so if you're pumping it up in a neighbourhood and you want to keep it quiet because you've got a dog that's chasing after you every time you pump your board up, you might be opting for the GE20 for sure. So they can both get a large amount of air in the board quite quickly, and if you're pumping a normal all round 10.5 ice up, you're going to find it's going to do it in about 6 to 7 minutes. So you've easily got enough time to get on, get changed, get out of the car, um, get all the stuff ready, get your paddle ready, and then your board will be inflated ready to go when you are. Now it's really important to note that when you're hearing and reading about inflation times with electric pumps, there's lots of equations that make up that time. How much PSI do you want your board to go to? What size is your board? How much air do they have to get in? How good is the battery? Is it fully charged? Is it near the end of its life? Is it a new battery? All of these things make a difference to how fast your board will get inflated. So moving on with other features on these pumps, both the pumps have automatic shut off so you can set the pressure of the pumps. This one on the GE20 is a bit easier to use, nice little feature there, you can rotate the dial, set it on the PSI and it cuts off. This one has got a bigger red knob which you turn around and you can set it again. They both work exactly the same and we've tested them when they pumped up and crossed them over and they both come up with the same results. So they both pumped the boards up to 18 psi, the readings were exactly the same. This one's got a built-in pressure gauge over here on the side and this one's a built-in pressure gauge. It's a bit neater, it's built in with the pressure shut off switch. Both these pumps are inflation only and they come with a vast selection of hoses to pump up almost anything you can imagine. Talking about the hoses, a really quick mention is worth talking about the two different colour sort of rubber shims you need on the ice up pumps. You, do, you get a vast selection of different thickness of shims that, that changes the distance of how deep the pump nozzle is. You need a black one and a yellow one and that fits on all of the ice ups we've ever tested. So when you unpack your pump, get your black one and yellow one out, the other ones you don't need. 
Both the pumps have the same attachment feature, except on the GE20, it has it on the top section here, and the GE21, it has it in the side section here. Did find the GE20 is a bit easier to use because it is on the top and then nothing gets in the way and it's all ready to plug into the board. The GE21, you do find that you have to get it a bit more of a right angle to get it into the board. So from that sense, this GE20 is easier to use. And definitely to get a really good seal on these pumps, it's worth paying a little bit of oil or WD-40 just around the inside of that, makes it go on really easy, really smooth, and then you get a really good seal around the rubber washer. Both the pumps weigh at around 4.5 kilos or about 6.5 kilos with their bags and all their accessories as well. Looking at the charging units and how you can charge these pumps, both these pumps charge at around about the same sort of time, 10 to 12 hours is fully charged. We'll be talking about how to charge them and get the most out of them in a minute but they come with a huge range of ways you can charge them. The GE20 has everything. So it has everything from crocodile clips that you can clip direct to a battery, to a, a clip that goes into a 12 volt car charger or a cigarette lighter in old terms. It has a US plug, a, a Euro plug, and various attachments. The only difference between the GE21 is it doesn't come with the crocodile attachments that you get, so you can go straight onto the battery. So point to note, if you're buying it and using it in the UK, you're gonna to have to get one of those Euro UK adapters to get it to work. That doesn't come in with the kit. So the last big difference between these two pumps to be mentioned is the automatic thermal shutoff. That's basically where you've been running your pump for 12, 13, 14 minutes. Any longer than 15 minutes, your pump can get quite hot. Now, this really depends on obviously how hot the air temperature is, where you're using it, and if you've been pumping board after board after board. This pump, the GE20, has an automatic shut off. So you're not gonna have to worry about the pump overheating. The 21, you're gonna have to be a bit more on it and understand how long you've been pumping for to keep that pump working in perfect condition. So for peace of mind, it is great having that thermal shut off on the more expensive pump. It is worth it because you can just forget about it, not have to worry about it. And with the automatic time PSI pressure cut off, it really is a very easy pump to use. So let's talk about charging these pumps, maintaining these pumps, and how we get the best out of them when we're using them for our sub sessions. So the stuff we've learned over the years of using electric pumps is you've got to look after your pumps and you've really got to look after your batteries. You've got to try and keep your pump charged up all of the time and not let it even sit at around half charge. You've got to try and keep it charged up all of the time. So easy way to do that is obviously at home, you can plug it into the wall, keep it fully charged for a long period. When we go to the beach, as we're driving towards the beach or the lake, we do also give it another top up charge with the 12 volt cigarette lighter charger just as we go. And then when we get there, we've got loads of power, puts loads of air in the board really quickly and we know the battery's in good condition. And also on the way back, we top it up again with the cigarette lighter just in the way. It's free electricity for a start and it's really handy just and easy to have. And the nice long lead means you can have it near the back of the car and plug it in at the front. If you do find that you didn't charge it on the way or you forgot to, the GE20 with the built-in light is great because when it's on the orange light, you can then plug it into the cigarette lighter in the car and keep charging. And that way uses a bit of the power from the battery, the inbuilt battery and the power from the car as well. So that's a really handy thing to be able to charge that up and know really what the battery level is with that warning light. So that's a real top mark with that one, having the warning light on that pump. So keeping these batteries fully charged at all times, even when you're not paddling, is the way to get the most out of these pumps. But a really nice thing that I know you can do with these is you can replace the batteries. Now, when you spend 250 euros on a pump, it is a lot of money. I'm not gonna say it's cheap, but if you can change the batteries for 20, 30 euros every two years, a year and a half, it's well worth it. The maintenance, the, the engineering in these pumps is absolutely fantastic. The batteries is always what will let a pump or any electronic device down. Battery technology is changing dramatically, but if you can change the batteries on these, it really, for me, gives the pump way more value for money. So that is something to bear in mind. You can change the batteries on these pumps. So to give you a bit of a subboard summary of the two pumps, which one you should be going for, the GE21 is the stripped back version, not got the thermal cut off. It's 50 euros or so cheaper. It's better if you understand your pumps and know how to use it. You're gonna pump one board up at a time and you know it's gonna be under 15 minutes, then look towards that pump. If you just wanna plug and play, not really think about it too much, not worry about hot, how hot your pump's going for, it's well worth paying the extra 50 euros or so and going for the GE20.2 and it is way quieter to use. Time difference and pressure, you can get pretty much the same out of both these pumps. And also, both the pumps come with great carry bags. You can stash all your leads and hoses in. 
If you look after them, maintain them and keep the batteries pumped up, these pumps will pump up board after board. Because after all, who actually really likes pumping up ice ups?